Hey everybody, it's Ron with Ron's Computer Videos. How's it going this evening? Um, I have something I want to share with you that has been maybe a week or two in the making. Uh, so let's just get right to it. So like a week or two back, I saw this neat thing that was going on over there at uh, Tom's Hardware about this um, project that was a $7 Micro Mac that lets you create a Mac 128 on a Pi Pico. And I thought, wow, that's really interesting. What are people going to think of next uh, for the Pi Pico? And it turns out um, this is actually a really cool emulator that will run on the Pico that lets you emulate either a 128K or a 512K Mac, depending on how it's configured. But there's a nice guy. His name is Matt Evans, who... Uh, basically just kind of hacked this all together. It got an emulator working on the Pi Pico. And uh, yeah, it lets you just play around with uh, a Mac. So the um, <clears throat> the uh, article over at Tom's Hardware actually showed um, how he connected it up and things like that. And I was like, oh yeah, it's just perf board. This is pretty easy. Anybody can kind of do that. And so what I thought was, um, he uh, he lays it all out and uh, things it will do, things it won't do. Um, but gosh, that looked simple to me. And I was pretty sure that anybody that wanted to play around with it, um, for some people doing perf board stuff is still maybe a little bit of a, um, of a barrier uh, to getting involved with the project. And so I thought, well, what could I do to kind of help the community and clean this up a little bit? And that's why I made this. This adapter here basically cleans up the design and makes it something easy for people to just add their own Pi Pico and fly. Um, the board itself just has a VGA connection. It has a micro USB connection for power, which I figure at this point in the game, that's the connection that the Pi Pico uses. You've probably got a million of these PSUs laying around. Um, if you don't like that, it's okay, because there is a two pin, 2.54 mil header there where you can go ahead and just, you know, hook up whatever you want. And of course, you can have a little diode in place to protect all your power. But yeah, basically your Pico just uh, plugs in there. You can drag solder it. Now this model right here is missing a couple of resistors. Um, the uh, versions that are shipping will have all that stuff populated. But uh, just in case we ever decide to sell it just as a kit, uh, it has the resistor values and everything listed. But let's take a look at one that's all soldered up. Here's one that has the Pico already installed and ready to go. So um, I why use a a, a Pi W well you know, or a Pico W because mostly because you never know they might add something in the future and it'd probably be better to have it spend the extra dollar and have it and not need it than. Uh, need it and not have it but yeah but it's uh, pretty straightforward you drag solder on the connection there's three little resistors down there that kind of even out the VGA signal that's it very simple and um, to program it all you have to do is just like with any other Pi Pico you uh, plug your USB uh, well cable in here to the port and on power up you hold the button down plug the cable in It'll show up as a drive on your PC, you release the cable, or you release the button rather, and you drag your file over and it'll reflash. Um, there are some cool tools that are on the horizon that'll make this uh, pretty simple to set up. Uh, basically, you can just kind of customize your image and then uh, reflash and away you go. Now, as things stand right now, there are a couple of limitations. There's not sound. Um, uh, any changes that you make to your virtual disk image are uh, not retained on a re on a uh, power off. Um, that is just the way it is right now. Again, it's early days with the emulator. And so um, this is all really just sort of like having fun and pushing the limits and stuff. But the more people that get involved with the project, uh, the more neat stuff can be, uh, you know, kind of thought up and implemented. So let's take a look at it in use. This is all pretty straightforward. The uh, the Pi itself is installed on the board. We're gonna connect the VGA connection. I have a USB on the go hub here. Uh, so that way that I can connect both a keyboard and mouse at the same time that will plug into your Pico. And then basically you just plug the power in. We should instantly see something up here. Now as a warning, 
I flashed this with one of Gruz's uh, little best of uh, things for like the Mac, like um, or the Mac 128 specifically. But this is, uh, you know, uh, that's that game, the game about the frogs. And so, um, yeah, as you can see, it plays pretty fast. Again, early days of the emulator. Um, oh, darn. <clears throat> I'm not as good at this game as I used to be when I was a kid. But, no, it's just fun. So, let's take a look at what it looks like when you actually boot the Mac operating system. Okay, so we're back. I went ahead and I reflashed it with uh, System uh, 3.2. I think that's like the very last version you can actually run on a 128. So we have our power connection. Uh, we've got our USB hub. So let's power this puppy up. And there you have it. There's uh, there's System 3.2. Um, this isn't really set up. You can't do a whole lot uh, with... Uh, uh, what I have right here, but again, the sky's the limit. You make a disc image, you uh, you put whatever you want on it, and away you go. Um, who knows what the future holds for the project? But as it sits right now, there are um, some neat things you can already do. Again, sound is kind of a limitation right now, but um, who knows what's possible in the future? But yeah, that's pretty much it. It. Um, it's pretty zippy, as you saw when running uh, Frogger. It runs a little bit faster, well, quite a bit faster than a real Mac 128. But again, the more people that get involved, you can kind of fix things like that. And that's kind of it for the moment. Um, I think initially we'll go ahead and just sell this uh, straight up adapter kit. Um, Pre-soldered everything, basically ready to go. You just add your own pie. Uh, for, I don't know, it's like $10. And if you want one that is completely soldered up, ready to go with a pie, it'd be like $20. Um, that's mostly to cover the cost of the pie and uh, somebody's labor to uh, solder it all up. So if you're, if you're handy with a soldering iron, go for the kit. Um, if you just want a turnkey kind of experience, I guess go for the pre-built, ready to roll uh, device. But Anyway, uh, that's kind of it for the moment. Uh, thanks, everybody, for spending a few minutes with me here this evening. And as I always say, uh, head over to jcm-1.com to learn more about these adapters and Apple II Forever.